one of the complaints that I hear a lot of people talk about with an array is the fact that it is a set size. From the time I create it until the time it's no longer used, it's always that size. I either have values that are unused or I have to go in and do some sort of weird workaround if I need just one more extra value. So if I had a, an array of 10 elements and I automatically needed an 11th element for some reason, I had to recreate that whole array, copy every element into that new array, and then add that last element. That is time consuming. It's a lot of a hassle. Luckily, there is a solution, and that solution is going to be use a vector. Now, a vector is a built-in data type to C++, but it uses a template type of idea because it's going to allow us to apply to whatever data we want to store. Now, to do that, I have in here, I've included vector, and I have to have that include inside of my file wherever I'm going to be using a vector. Then I'm going to specify vector and then the data type. So I'm going to do a vector of ints. I'm going to call this V. It's short for vector. I know, no big deal. And I'm going to make it by default 10 elements big. Now, this is not like an array, which is stuck to be 10 elements. This is just the starting point. Every time we add or remove an element from a vector, it's a time-consuming process. Now, with modern computers, you're probably going, how time-consuming is it? Well, it's not if you just do it once or twice, but if you do it thousands of times, it can add up. And so the closer we can get to what the standard size is we're going to be, the better we can do it. Okay, so here I've created a vector with 10 elements. Now, I can pass a second element, let's say 100, and this is going to give it a default value for all those elements. To go through this, I'm going to say something like for int i equals 0, and this should look really familiar. i is less than v.size, then i++. Plus plus. Now, you might be going, well, what's this v dot size? Well, that's the size of my vector, how many elements I have. Notice I reference it just like I do with my array. I've got my square brackets to index into it. And I'm going to say angle, angle, inline. Okay, let's run this real quick. I have 10 values each of 100. Now, I could go in, I could randomly set those things. That's easy to do. I could go in, I could mainly set a couple of values and reprint out. You would see that as normal. However, I have some built-in special functions. So, for example, I have a pushback function, which adds elements to the vector at the end of my vector. I have a pop back, which is going to remove the last element. We've already seen size, and while I can use the square brackets, I can also use the at op. I can, <coughs> and while you see me use the square brackets, I can also use an at method if I want to. Let's look at a couple of other things that I can do just as a quick example. I'm going to add a new element to the end. I'm going to say v dot pushback. I'm going to specify 99. I'm going to say v dot pushback, and I'm going to do 98. And I'm just going to do this just a couple of times. I could have done this as many as I wanted to. But now I'm going to loop and reprint out all my values. When I do it this time, because I used a pushback, I have first my 100 values 10 times, then I have my 100 a second time, 99, 98. So I've added those values. So this becomes a really easy way to create dy essentially dynamic arrays that allow me to grow, to add elements or remove elements as I need to by using those special functions. And by using those special functions, I get extra benefit out of them. So that's one of the advantages to using a vector. Now, 
it is a class. It does have some extra overhead that's involved with it. And that is the downside of it. You always have to evaluate which do I want to use and why. But it does provide you with new opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily have if you were only using an array. 